On the 6th of December, there will be a new episode uh, of Traders of Knowledge, and this time it's about Parkinson's disease and how Tai Chi Chuan and Qigong is used to support Parkinson patients. We have invited three international guests. It's Rosalind Smith, Mirko Lawrence, Isabel Senf Daniel. And I'm curious to see what uh, experiences and practices the three of them will share with us. And I'm Orte, and here's a small introduction of Rosalind from the UK, Mirko from Germany, and Isabel from the US. Well, I'm very lucky. I have two teachers, Jean and Dave Haynes, and they are senior students of Patrick Kelly, who himself is a senior student of Master Huang Sensayan of Malaysia. And I've been training with them for 20 years. It's wonderful because they have different skill sets. Dave is particularly good at the external choreography of the form. And Jean specializes in the internal aspects of Tai Chi. So I'm very lucky and I've trained with them for the past 20 years and they're able to transmit the teachings of Master Wang's Sin Saiyan to me. Yes, my first important teacher was uh, Long Sifu. Um, I met him in China and he, he showed me first time Tai Chi and especially Chen style Tai Chi and he also gave me first experiences with uh, Qigong and my latest or last important teacher especially for my push and skills was uh, Chen Zichang from Chen Jiabo. For me uh, life is and was the most important teacher. The way is getting deeper, getting deeper and getting deeper and don't stop learning. Um, when I was in China I learned one sentence and this sentence was um, don't do 1000 forms or 1000 kicks, just do one kick 1000 times. Yeah? And I think um, this is important if you want to get in better or deeper then don't waste your time with many things. Go straight, go one way. The never ending story. The long and winding road. It's been interesting, enjoyable, challenging, fascinating, frustrating at times, but it's something that's very special to me. I would actually take Sarah's key if I would have a lot of time and read it again and again since uh, my time is very, very spare. Well, I think I'd like to take Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. She's a very famous English author and she wrote beautifully. And I read the book a couple of times, a long time ago, and I think I'm ready to read it again. So it has a happy ending too. So I think I'd like to take that with me. Oh, if I go to a monastery and I go often to a monastery, I'd rather to have times for my own. And especially I would write a book. This is the important things over my step for next time so it would be an empty book and I would fulfill it with my own thoughts, with my own ideas. Well, I take singing lessons, so it's usually the song that I'm practicing and I've just finished singing Seben Kudele by Antonio Caldara and that was lovely. And my next challenge is Morgenthau by Hugo Wolf. So I'm not sure if I said that right. So I need to learn some German to sing that. So that should be a challenge. It's a bit like learning Tai Chi. Actually, a lot like learning Tai Chi. I like silence. 
maybe the noise of nature or something, the sound of nature, not the noise, the sound of nature, uh, but I don't like music so, so much. So. I love at the moment, I love classic music. Um, I still love um, Smetana's uh, Moldau, the Moldau. Every day is 24 hours, so how can I use this 24 hours uh, on the best way? Um, it's a quote of Ruth Ginsburg, um, fight for the things that you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. I think that's a, that's a great quote for the crazy time we live in at the moment. Be kind to yourself. In the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic, when it's quite a challenging time, I think it's really important. We can be quite harsh on ourselves sometimes. I think it's important to be kind to ourselves. You know, it's really hard to treat people remotely online or, in, you know, you cannot touch anybody and that's kind of really crazy. Well, my challenge is to let go of trying. I'm quite a perfectionist. I want to get things right. I'll work really hard, but that brings in contraction, the opposite of what we want in Tai Chi. So if I can let go of trying, if I can have a strong intention and listen with awareness to what truly arises in the body, it would be much easier for myself. How can I bring the benefits of Tai Chi and Qigong um, to another level for more people? Yeah. We, are in, uh, we are practicing every day and since many years and we know how good Tai Chi is for body, for health, for, for your mind. But a lot of people even don't know and so I'm searching for ways that people can understand how useful in this times Tai Chi is. Well, my first response was, I'd like to be a tree. And that's because they're very bare in the winter. And in the spring, the leaves come out and the green is so beautiful that I say, where have you been? I can't, I've forgotten how beautiful you are. So I think a tree would be very good. Perhaps an oak tree, because they live 900 years, 300 years to grow, 300 years middle age, and 300 years they slowly decline. Trees are so important. They give us oxygen and life, so they're so important for this planet. I think a tree would be very good. Yeah, I think I am nature, I am a human being, so <laughs> what should I answer on this question? Uh... I would be fire. Since I'm on fire all the time, never to stop, where well, there's a little problem, I know normally I should uh, take some time for myself. Um, yeah, really hard and I have to learn it. <laughs>